Yes. Hey. Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is conspiracy theories and their explanation. And we're fortunate to have Alana McLaughlin with us to talk about uh, some of the conspiracy theories that she believed to be prominent among many people and uh, to give some rationale in terms of why we should be concerned with the various kinds of conspiracy theories that she's talking about. And of course, Alana, let me welcome you to the show uh, this morning and to uh, start us off by giving us some information about your background, your education, and some of your experiences. You've been with us a number of times, and I'm sure that all of that information is quite familiar to some of our audience, but some of them might not know. So let's do it from that perspective. Well, as you've already stated, my name is Alon McLaughlin. I am 11 years old. I was born August 27, 2002, and I am currently in sixth grade at John Early Museum Magnet Middle School. <coughs> Um, I've gone to many schools for elementary schools, such as uh, Napier, Alex Green, Robert Churchwell Museum Magnet School. And um, for middle school, I'm just going straight through John Early because it's also the pathway to Hume Fall Academic High School, which is where I want to go. <coughs> I'm very, I'm heavily involved in many activities after church, um, after, you know, out of school such as my church and other organizations that I can help out with and actually uh, recently I was nominated to attend the Junior National Young Leaders Conference in Washington DC uh, in the summer of 2014 in June and so yes I will be attending that for a week in Washington where um, people high up in power will be uh, leading me and groups of other children around Washington so that we can experience it as our living classroom. Um, a few more experiences about me. Um, I all, Recently, actually, uh, I preached at uh, Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church uh, for their Love and the Unity of Family program. And so, yes, I try to get involved in everything I can because I think that is my calling. No, no, I, I, I guess... Uh people would probably wonder why in the world we would want to talk about uh, conspiracies and uh, how do you explain some of the conspiracies that we're dealing with. But what's your rationale in terms of dealing with this? And why don't you think in terms of uh, the greatest conspiracy you know of, and that will give our audience an idea as to how far we think that we might be able to go in reference to dealing with these conspiracies. Talk about the greatest conspiracy that you know and some explanation in terms of that, and then we'll be able to sort of del delve into various conspiracies. Well, really, why I chose to talk about conspiracy theories today is <clears throat> recently uh, my encore class, we were talking, and then my encore teacher starts talking about conspiracy theories and how um, one night, in that week, he uh, watched a video <coughs> about how the moon, the man on the moon was staged, and that's actually the first conspiracy I want to talk about because I think, in my mind, is most famous because this is a little known fact: forty percent of Americans, only forty percent, do not believe that this happened, and that that is a pretty great percentage. I mean, forty percent of Americans, you think that well, like ten percent believe it didn't happen, but forty percent. Don't so, believe that a man walked Don't up. believe uh -huh. that it happened. And so I think that's a pretty big percentage. And so also, the man on the moon. So I watched a YouTube video, and I've gone on various blogs and websites and even read official statements from NASA, and a lot of this didn't make sense to me. One thing is that, so I was going through pictures of Neil Armstrong on the moon, and then I saw, I saw something that made no sense to me. You, okay, so there's no gravity on the moon. 
the American flag was waving, but there's no gravity on the moon. How would it wave? And also, the craters on the moon look eerily similar to the ones in Area 51, a place where nobody can go unless they're working there without getting shot down without a warning. Now, why would they block off this place to everybody, but just everything normal is going on there? Is there something they're trying to hide from us? Um, another reason why I think, well, I don't personally think that this never happened, but one reason why people think that this never happened is because uh, I guess it was a few days before Neil Armstrong actually went on the moon. He uh, flew a tester um, spaceship, which was six times smaller than the actual one he took up in the space. He crashed that one, and he had to um, eject because right after it crashed, it bl blew up. But then a few days later, in that same week, he beautifully flew a spaceship up to the moon, but he couldn't take this one in Area 51 up to the sky without making it explode. And so, Lana, uh, these are some of the conspiracies that you believe that our audience ought to be concerned about, and you trying to give some kind of explanation to them as to why they are conspiracies. And from what I understand, you've got a whole bag full of uh, various conspiracies <laughs> that uh, somehow you've convinced me that we ought to talk about today on this show. And I think that you're doing a good job so far, and we're going to take our first commercial break, and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for, the, for today. We're talking to Alana McLaughlin and she's dealing with conspiracies and how she has some information in reference to how all of these conspiracies came about. And during the first segment, she gave us quite a bit of information. And so Alana, during this second segment, segment let's see if we can uh, continue our discussion in reference to conspiracies. And actually, before I start, I want to give, um, I want to have a quick saying to our viewers that these are not my personal views that I'm disclosing today. This stuff is the stuff that I found on the internet, that I found on blogs. This is not my personal subject. I'm not saying that, um, that Neil Armstrong never touched the moon. I'm not saying that so-and-so did this or so-and-so. This is stuff that I've personally seen. Just for our information. Just for your information. This is not my personal views. Now, um, I want to go into uh, famous conspiracy theories in pop culture, like uh, artists and music. Now, I think another famous conspiracy theory that a lot of people don't know about is the Tupac conspiracy theory. Now, as you know, Tupac was a very famous rapper at the time of his death. He was murdered. And so, basically, after he was murdered, he, he um, albums kept being released under his name and songs kept being released after his death. And a lot of people don't believe that he pre-recorded those many songs. And a lot of people still do think that he's in Albuquerque, New Mexico, still recording songs to release in future albums and making money off of it um, because he wanted to use this murder as a pub pub publicity stunt so that he would make more money because, you know, people would be grieving his death and they would buy more albums and get their friends to buy more albums. He would release more songs, making more albums. That's a, that's, a, that's a conspiracy in reference to you believe that uh, a large number of folks believe that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, another one is that Shakespeare wasn't Shakespeare. Now, um, <laughs> yeah, I know this makes uh, no sense at all. Well, a lot of people believe that the man who wrote all these books like Romeo and Juliet wasn't who we think to be Shakespeare of Stratford. They think it was William Stanley or Francis Bacon because... Due to a lot of missing stuff about, you know, biographical information about him, like birth date or burial date, a lot of people don't really believe he existed, and they think that Shakespeare was a, a pseudonym that um, many authors use, like Carolyn Keene, who wrote Nancy Drew. Mm -hmm. It was actually a group of people who used Carolyn Keene as a name to keep their identity sacred. Now, another one is uh, Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper was a uh, famous uh, serial uh, killer back uh, in, I guess, like a really long time ago. 
And so Jack the Ripper would slay girls. He would slit their throats. Um, he would find prostitutes on the street and just murder them and leave their body parts scoured up and down the streets. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people that think that Vincent Van Gogh was, quote unquote, Jack the Ripper. And they think this because a lot of Van Gogh's work represents the outline of some of Jack the Ripper's body parts that he skewered across the streets. Like, for instance, a leg, a leg that he severed off of a woman, well, Jack the Ripper severed off a woman, was featured in one of Van Gogh's paintings. Mm -hmm. Like, the outline of the leg was featured in a background of the painting. So a lot of people think that this is really weird. And there are also books on it. It's the same thing with Tupac. Mm -hmm. And even Elvis Presley, the same thing as Tupac. After he death, he kept releasing songs. If people don't think he pre-recorded these songs, they think he's still alive to this day. Now, um, another one in the music industry is Kurt Cobain. If you're not familiar with mm -hmm. Kurt Cobain, he was the lead singer of the band Nirvana. He uh, shot himself in the head and killed himself. Now, a lot of people think that his, uh, that his then girlfriend, Courtney Love, murdered him so that she could inherit his money and uh, take over all the rights to all Nirvana songs and famous albums like Nevermind or In Utero. And so they think that she murdered him so that she can claim all his money because he was very rich at the time and he was famous. And he still is to this day. And so a lot of people think that he was murdered by his girlfriend and that the FBI and the CIA covered it up. Go on. And then now I want to talk about even more famous ones. Like in the previous se in the previous uh, segment, if you're not, if you're just tuning in, I talked about uh, the man on the moon and how there were a lot of evidence saying that you know he didn't really land on the moon. Like um, there were no stars in the sky in the pictures that were taken of Neil Armstrong on the moon. The American flag was waving, and there's no gravity on the moon. Um, he uh, crashed um, a mini spaceship that he was trying to fly, but then he uh, flew one six times at six times harder to drive into space and landed on the moon gracefully. But then he crashed one and made it explode just days before. And so those are some of the ones that in pop culture. And now there are other ones like um, Pan Am Flight 103. If you're not familiar with that, on December 21st, 1988, Flight 103 exploded over Lockerbie, Scotland, killing everyone on board and 11 residents of the town. Although Libya has recently claimed responsibility for the attack, of all the items on this list, Flight 103 has probably been responsible for spawning the greatest number of conspiracy theories. Some people say that the CIA started. Some people say that's, um, that Libya started. Some people say that, you know, it was hijacked by terrorists. And so nobody really knows what really happened because everybody on there was killed. But then, so a lot of people say that, hey, it was the FBI, or hey, it was the CIA, or hey, maybe it was America. Maybe people on that flight knew a little too much about the FBI and that they wanted to keep them quiet. And that leads me on to my next subject, the, um, the Twin Towers conspiracy. I read a conspiracy theory about 9-11, uh, September 11, 2001, which said that, um, that the Twin Towers were blown up because certain people inside the Twin Towers were investigating old files and old cases involving the FBI and the CIA and the President of the United States. And so they were investigating that, and they had gotten a, a quote unquote a little too close to the truth about what the FBI is doing to people, about brainwashing techniques that they've been studying and that they've been practicing on poor people. And so when the, ten tw when the people in the Twin Towers buildings were about to disclose this information, boom, two, um, two planes flew into those buildings. And so a lot of people think that those planes didn't just fly into those. They think that it was set up by the FBI and terrorists was just thrown all over it because they didn't want the FBI to be in trouble for this. And also another one, um, I think a really famous one that I know of is um, the one, uh, JFK's assassination. And so that talks about um, how Lee Harvey Oswald could have had two accomplices or how his brain was removed during the autopsy and kept as a souvenir or that he never really died. And so those are a, f a few conspiracies. And so basically, I will get more into the JFK one in our next segment. Very good. And of course, Alana, let me... Uh simply say that uh, it's, uh, it's astounding to me in terms of uh, having uh, understood that you were going to talk about these various conspiracies and to somehow believe that uh, somehow you could carry this through. And I think that you're doing an excellent job. 
in terms of carrying it through because I really don't know, have anything to say in reference to it. Conspiracy theories are more popular than you would believe, really. Yeah, well, I think that you're demonstrating that. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Alana McLaughlin and she's talking about uh, conspiracies and some of the explanations for uh, some of the many conspiracies that uh, she has uh, come across uh, on, through various sources. And so Alana, let's uh, uh, continue our uh, discussion with the various kinds of conspiracies and uh, elaborate up on some of them if you so desire and uh, do whatsoever you will in reference to it because I only thing I can do is just wonder about what in the world you are talking about mm. in terms of where you got all of this information from. Go on, talk about that. Now if you're just tuning in, um, as Dr. Haney has stated, I am Alon McLaughlin. I'm 11 years old, <laughs> believe it or not, and um, I go, am in sixth grade at John Early Museum Magnet Middle School. Now in the second segment, well in the first segment I talked about my background in education, and in the second segment I talked about, I gave a few examples of some famous conspiracy theories, the Tupac conspiracy theory, and I also led on, uh, and I gave a little bit about the JFK assassination conspiracy theory. Now I'm going to elaborate more on that right now. The JFK assassination uh, conspiracy theory, there are thousands of conspiracy theories that, around the world, but I narrowed down to my uh, to two that really made me go, wow. The first one was that Lee Harvey Oswald, the man who assassinated John F. Kennedy, the president, or the former president, um, he had two accomplices. We had two more accomplices. Now, this is saying that there were three people, including Lee Harvey Oswald and two other unknown people, and that the, uh, the FBI only disclosed Lee Harvey Oswald's identity, and then they took him into confinement, and then they took the other two accomplices and tortured them until their death in re in, to avenge uh, JFK's death and in revenge to uh, Lee Harvey Oswald, because these were Lee Harvey Oswald's brothers, and in some cases I've heard that these were his best friends or his former classmates from high school. But um, in the most famous one, I've heard that these were his brothers that he had that they that he used to be uh, to kill John F. Kennedy. And now the second one was that during John F. Kennedy's autopsy, his his brain was removed from his head. Hmm. Now uh, the story goes, well, the conspiracy goes that John F. Kennedy um, during his autopsy they sawed the top of his head off and then they uh, they looked at his brain because they wanted to investigate his brain to see um, if, if A they could bring him back to life or if B how he could be so smart and so cunning mm -hmm. and so they investigated uh, things in his brain they tried different things di different potions on his brain and finally the doctors who performed his autopsy keep his brain as a souvenir of their most famous autopsy and they keep it in a, uh, in a little room inside a hidden hospital or in some cases I've heard that they hide inside Area 51, another reason why nobody can really go in there. Now a second very famous um, conspiracy theory that I've heard of is the Pearl Harbor conspiracy theory. Now although for most of us it was a surprise, the, conspiracy, the, the theory goes that it wasn't really a surprise for a select few, including President Roosevelt. This is Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, yeah, Pearl Harbor. in December of 1941. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, President Roosevelt, who, who having advocated for war against Germany, finally found his opportunity. Of note, proponents often point out that none of the Navy's three Pacific aircraft carriers were in port that day. Now, if the Navy's uh, three Pacific aircraft carriers weren't in port, were in port that day, why would, they all, why would three of them be in port that day? What sense does that make? And so they think that President Roosevelt just really wanted a good reason to start the war on G Germany. So he said, hey, they started Pearl Harbor, let's start the war. Because people think that A, the FBI planned it um, in a, 
some people think that it was a surprise for Roosevelt and that the FBI planned it as a gift to him so he could finally start that war on Germany. And some people say that he planned it so he could start the war on Germany. But in every instance that I've come about, it all talks about how he wanted to start the war on Germany. And another thing, and I also talked about in a previous subject, um, the Shakespeare one, and how a lot of people think that Shakespeare didn't write his books like A Midsummer Night's Dream or Romeo and Juliet, and they think it, um, his stories were written by William Stanley or Francis Bacon. Now, another one, another very famous conspiracy theory that is actually really recent is the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting conspiracy theory. Now, um, one day I was scrolling throughout YouTube and then I, I, and I was, and I came across this video and it said proof that Sandy Hook was a hoax. And I'm sitting here like, why would anybody say this was a hoax? And so me being half in anger and half in disbelief that somebody would take the death of children and make it into a hoax, I watched the video. And honestly, I saw some information that blew my mind. Like um, one man who was interviewed about seeing dead children strewn across his driveway because he lived right next to the school. Him and him and three other people who were interviewed about Sandy Hook were all part of a Screen Actors Guild. And also, there's one picture of children walking out of the school with their teacher crying. And then, only a few more students were killed in that Sandy Hook Elementary School. There were supposedly from 200 to 300 um, children that were in the school that day. Um, and I guess somewhere around 12 to 15 of them were photographed. And I know that over 100 children, and I personally, I don't remember hearing about 100 to 200 children being killed in Sandy Hook. So what happened to the rest of the children? Because there were supposedly 200 to 300 in the school that day, from what I've seen, um, on different websites, and I may be wrong. And then only about 12 to 15 of them were photographed all in that line walking out with their teacher. That photograph has been made viral. And the rest of them were quote unquote killed. Um, I didn't. I don't remember hearing about 100 to 200 children being killed, and, but what happened, so if those children weren't killed, what happened to them? I mean, so, I know some children could have been absent that day, thank God, and um, some children could have been sick that day, but there were still uh, somewhere around 100 to 130, 40 children that were there, and if they weren't killed, what happened to them? Because they weren't photographed or recorded coming out of the school, if they stayed in the school, how, how were there that many children inside the school? Lana, after all of these conspiracies that you've talked about, uh, do many people believe in some of the, the conspiracies that you're talking about? Is, that, is, is it a widely held thing of people believe in a large number of intelligent people believe in some of these conspiracies? Uh, yeah, like um, I was reading a Time Magazine article this morning talking about how the FBI has been trying substances on African Americans, making us so prone to STDs or HIVs. And a lot of people believe in stuff like um, Time Magazine, well, no, the University of Chicago took a poll um, asking 1,342 people um, their beliefs on if the government tries things on us, like brainwashing techniques, and we don't know about it, 39% of people said yes. 40% of people believe that we never landed on the moon, and the rest of the theories that I've talked about weren't polled, but I mean, these were stuff that I've gone on previous pages and all the stuff that I've named, I've seen on blogs and stuff and all in the same videos. And I'm just thinking, wow, this stuff is really popular. And uh, I've heard of all of these before, but only this time have I really taken the time out to really search and dig and dig into them. And I just really, it blew my mind how 40% how of Americans believe that we never touched the moon. 40%, that is a very big population in my opinion. And so there's a, there's a real conspiracy uh, in terms of the belief that people have in uh, conspiracies and et cetera. And so you think that a large number of folks uh, just simply disbelieve some of the things that uh, might be apparent or obvious to everybody else that they just don't believe it is. is and I'm not really uh, one for conspiracy theories. I, I mean, they, I find them interesting. I find it interesting how people's minds can make up these elaborate things that the government is trying to kill us all or that Chernobyl was planned. And uh, so, yeah, I just, I think this is really interesting. 
Because, you know, um, reading about 9-11, I never thought that this was started by the government. I just I read about it, and I said, wow, terrorists really did this to us. And talking about the Tupac murder, I mean, I never thought twice about it. I mean, I wasn't born to see it because I wasn't alive in the 90s. But I just look at it, and I'm like, wow, this, I just thought he was cute. I never thought that he was still alive or that the government started it. And because in every case that I've seen, except the Shakespeare one and the Jack the Ripper one, it was started by the government. Pearl Harbor started by the government. Okay, Lana, let me uh, thank you for coming by and giving us that excellent information in reference to uh, some of the uh, major conspiracies and how prone so many folks are to believe in these conspiracies. And I appreciate you indicating that these were some of the conspiracies that you know, but not your necessarily your beliefs and et cetera. But uh, I want to thank you for that uh, information. And let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.